Guys, are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. Uh, that, uh, last time we, uh, we, we completed the diffusion and we started on some and another process that involves the transporting of materials. Uh, what osmosis is, and the, the diagram trying to illustrate why osmosis occurs, how, how. Uh, and the, it is water that moves from region of dilute solution to region of concentrated solution across the permeable membrane. So we are able to demonstrate this increased volume in these big parts. I'm breaking. Yes. The network is poor. Wow. Yes. I'm also hearing some echo. Excuse me, teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a question. A question. A question here. Yeah. Um, teacher, so. In osmosis, it's only the water that moves yeah, the, the molecule, don't move the solids. Yes, it, 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 that's true. It is only the water that moves in, in any other solvent. It is the water that moves within the solutions from one point to another. It is only water that moves. Uh, and it moves from a less concentrated solution less solute concentrated solution to a more concentrated solution, but there should be a membrane. Uh, and so we had started on the experiments to illustrate osmosis, especially in living tissues. Living tissues, and here we are using the Irish potato, uh, where we prepared the, where we talked about two, three, different potatoes. I hope now I'm clear. Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Okay. The three potatoes are, are prepared and the, one of them is boiled. Of course, they are peeled. One of them is boiled and the, two of them you put there, the salt or the sugar. And the one which is boiled, it is among those on which where you put sugar, the one which is boiled. And of course, you first make the cavity. You first make the holes within where you can put the, the salt. And the, this is how it is prepared. You get these potatoes, peel them. Then you put them in a beaker. In the beaker, there is water. <clears throat> put the salt inside the cavities, inside the holes, uh, A and B. Uh, these are fresh potatoes. Uh, but C is boiled. A and B are not boiled. In A and C, you have put the salt or the sugar solution, sugar crystals. And in B, you have not put any. And, and so, so the question now is, why do we put there sugar? Why do we put sugar in these potato cavities? Anyone who would like to answer? Mm 
Um, teacher, can I try? Yes, please. Um, I'm not sure, teacher, but um, can you say to create the, the concentrated solution in where, to where the osmosis is going to take place? That is very correct. You are creating a, 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 an environment which is concentrated compared to the other. Uh, so in the potato, of course, when you put their sugar, it is, it is weighted by water from the fresh, from these tissues, from these potatoes. It doesn't mean like sugar. It is weighted, so it is already a solution. So you are creating a concentrated environment, a concentrated area. And so, what do we expect to see in A? Um, teacher, can I try? Yes, please. Um, the, the water solution passes through the, the fresh potato and hosts the place where the sugar and creates a sugar solution. Okay, that is very correct. Water moves from the beaker through the potato into the cavity where there is sugar. What do we, what will be, we observe in B? So can I continue? Yes, yes. Um, I think that there will be no water that enters due to the fact that there is no concentration solution where, where osmosis is going to take place. That's very good. No water will be observed in the in the cavity, in the hole within the potato because there is no sugar. Uh, so no osmosis takes place. And, uh, and, and so these are the observations that you have mentioned. Uh, in the water enters and fills up the cavity. In B, water did not enter because there is no sugar. Uh, in C, the level is the same. What do we say? Why is it that the level is the same in the C? Teacher, can I try? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Um, teacher, I'm also not sure at this point, but um, could you say that the say membrane is a bit too much? Permeable or something. Due to the fact that it's boiled. Not sure. Uh, meaning that yes, that would be a point meaning that what now? Meaning that um the sugar okay, it enters in the, the sugar solution and so does the sugar enter the water solution, the, the water. No. Therefore creating a, a, a same level. No. A uniform movement. Yes, that is very correct. Because it is boiled, the potato is boiled, the membranes are destroyed, their permeability, you know, they're supposed to be selectively permeable. So their selectively permeability is affected. So what happens is water enters, dissolves the sugar. After dissolving the sugar, the sugar also passes through the potato back into the beaker. So there will be movement in either direction until it is uniformly distributed, until the solution is uniformly distributed. So that's why it is on the same level. Uh, so we are going to read through the procedure and the, the observation that will be made for us to understand this experiment. Uh, who is going to read Jack, for can us? Jack, can uh, I read? Is it the same person who has been answering? Yes. No. Yes. Any other person who would like to read through for us? Chami. Okay, yes, read, read through. Experiment to demonstrate osmosis. In an artificial, in a in a living tissue, materials: stroke apparatus, fresh Irish potatoes, knife, petri dishes, sugar or salt, and water. Procedure: Three fresh Irish potatoes are peeled and they are in sliced fat. The interiors are 
scooped out to form a cup with walls of uniform thickness. The potato cups are labeled A, B, and C, respectively. In A, some crystals of sugar are placed in the cup, while the other potato B is left empty as a control. The, the third potato uh, cup C is bold to kill or destroy the tissues, and also some sugar crystals are put in it. All the potato cups are placed in water in petri dishes. The experiment is left to run, is left to run for two so that you are able to cells which are living cells. These, these potatoes, that's why when you plant them, they are able to germinate. So they are they have living cells, they are living tissues. Uh, at the end of the experiment, someone else, can you read for us after two to six hours? What would we be able to see? Someone else, read through for us. Can I? The liquid in the cup potato A had risen to form a sugar solution, and in the petri dish, the level of water had fallen. In potato, potato B, the cup was still empty, and the water level in the petri dishes remained the same. In the boiled potato cup, the solution in the cup rises to the same level with the water in the petri dish. Yes, so this is the, the setup. Uh, this is what you have been reading. In A, water enters and the water rises. Uh, and water in the beaker decreases because it has entered. Uh, the, the water in B, there was no change. Uh, in the C, it entered, but it is uniformly distributed. Uh, can someone else read for us the conclusion, the conclusion. And, and explanation? Teacher, may I read? Conclusion. What takes place in living tissues and the Osmosis takes place in living tissues and does not take place in boiled tissues because boiling the tissues destroys the membrane, the, the, the membrane semi-permeability, and then it becomes freely permeable. Explanation. Living tissues have cell membrane or cell walls acting as semi-permeable membrane and allow water to move by osmosis while boiling a living tissue makes it freely permeable. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so that is the conclusion that uh, there are four osmosis takes place in the living tissues and the boiling you have seen it destroys the membranes because the permeability is affected and they become fully permeable. And that is very dangerous. If it was in a living organism and everything is very permeable, it means that even the waste products will go back into the, our body system. So the membranes are made in a such a way that yeah. they are permeable. They allow some materials to go through and prevent. Okay, you're breaking. Yeah, breaking. Others from can going through, and uh, uh, any question? This one discuss. Yes, teacher. And it is an experiment to demonstrate osmosis in uh, an artificial membrane. The artificial membrane usually used the, the visking tubing, which is the same as the cellophane. The other name is the cellophane, the visking tubing. Uh, so what you do, get a visking tubing. Uh, this is like a polythene, we said it is like a polythene, which is this, these white ones, tie it at the bottom with a thread, and uh, then you put there the sugar solution or salt solution. Then you fix there a capillary tube. Put there a capillary tube, 
a glass tube. Now this glass tube, when we talk of a capillary tube, it means that it has a scale. It can easily be read. Or even if it has no scale, you are able to mark on it. Uh, so insert it within the visking tubing as shown. Insert it within the visking tubing and again tie it on the top. Tie it on the top with a thread. Of course you cramp to support the whole apparatus and put it in distilled water. You remember visking tubing had been discussed during diffusion. And here we are using it in osmosis. And so what do you think will happen? And when you do that, water will rise up to some level within the capillary tube, within the glass tube, so that you make a mark there. Using a marker, you put a mark where the solution has started. Now that is the first level, the starting point. You should put it in a such a way that uh, the, the sugar solution is, is slightly above the visking tube, above the visking tubing, we, and it appears within the capillary tube. And you mark that level as the starting point. Then you insert the whole of it into a beaker containing distilled water. Leave the experiment for two minutes. Leave the experiment for two minutes. Okay, what do you think you'll be able to observe? Not two minutes, two hours. Um, teacher, can I try? Even two hours, it can even take you 15 to 30 minutes. Actually, 15 to 30 minutes are enough. 15 to 30 minutes are enough. Okay, what do you think will be able will be observed after the time given? Um, teacher, I think the water solution, the distilled water, will pass through the same permeable membrane. It will pass with, through the visking tube and mix with the sugar solution, causing the sugar solution to move higher in, in the in the capillary tube. That's very good. Yes. Water will enter into the sugar solution uh, and uh, through the visking tubing, and then it rises within the capillary tube. Why? The explanation why? I'm due to osmosis. Due to osmosis. Okay, you have simplified it like that. Yes, due to osmosis. The reason is due to osmosis. The reason is because the solution, the visking tubing is more concentrated, has more sugar solution compared to distilled water. So, okay, uh, besides this, they put a color in the visking tubing so that you can clearly see the movement. You know, there are some people who are colorblind. They cannot easily see the colorless solution. So in the, besides that one, there's another one which is colored red in the solution. But of course there is a sugar solution and they are put in distilled water. But within the sugar solution, they are put there a dye so that when there is movement, it can easily be seen properly. And so that is the, that the is experiment the, show, the experiment show that was most takes place in non-living material. I can hear some people. Is it properly? You're breaking. Yeah. Um, Sometimes the network, I think, goes on and off. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. The sugar solution in the visking tubing is more concentrated than the distilled water. So when the distilled water gets into the visking tubing, does it, does it only rise up to the capillary tube or does some of it also?
it, it will not go down and mix with okay yes it, it mixes with the sugar solution first of all it enters the sugar solution itself it enters the visking tubing the whole of it from the bottom on the sides on either way but once it enters that visking tubing then it rises through the capillary tube rises up within the Question. So it's the one that causes the, the rising into the capillary tube. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, teacher, I have a question. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, um, you know how um, the distilled water enters the sugar solution and causes it to rise. Um, I want to ask, does it does that mean when when it stops rising that the solution is equally is equally dilute or concentrated? Oh, oh, you are asking that the uh, question is that when will osmosis stop? That's the question you are asking. Uh, because now, as the water enters, the concentration keeps on reducing. The concentration gradient keeps on reducing. So the intake at some point low. You can only observe it after maybe after some days. And therefore, you are not going to wait for this experiment for if it is this time or even a, an hour. We shall be able to see some slight change within 20 to 30 minutes. When we have seen that change, then we are able to know that osmosis is taking place. Otherwise, when you leave it, definitely it will continue rising, but this time slowly, because the difference in the concentration now is very, very small. The solution, the visking tubing is becoming dilute every time water enters. So the change will be minimal. But yes, it continues taking place when you leave it. At the end of the day or two days, even this capillary can be fully filled up and even start pouring off. But if the capillary tube is very large, then it means to reach a point where it cannot, it can, when, when the concentrations are equal, when the concentration of the of the sugar and the distilled water, but they can never be equal because sugar is not coming out. They can never be equal. Uh, the, 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 the rise, it reaches a point and becomes minimal, but if it, assume the capillary tube is very large, means that the movement will reach a point and stop. And when it stops, it means that the solution is completely very dilute. That in probably its amount of sugar is equivalent to that one in the distilled water. But in distilled water, we don't have sugar. So only that the only thing that we can observe within 30 minutes is just a slight change. But water will keep on entering. We have not um, done it for two excuse hours. Me, teacher. Excuse me, teacher. Teacher, does the water have to be distilled? It have to be distilled. Yes, because if the water is not distilled, you cannot be sure whether it is salty water. Uh, for example, we have studied about hard water in chemistry. Some of these waters have got those salts. And those salts will affect the concentration. So better when you use distilled water, but if you use the rubber water, make sure that the sugar you put in the visking tubing is a bit high, that the concentration is much, you are sure that the concentration is much more than the salts which are in the, in the water, which is distilled. Otherwise, if you have distilled water, you are very sure you'll get a perfect experiment. Excuse me, teacher. Please. Well, why does it have to be distilled water? It is what I've been saying is that it is not distilled it has some salts. Water have salts. These salts are eroded from the rocks. They are even 
they even dissolved out from the soil as water moves into the streams and lakes. They dissolve those mineral nutrients in the soil. So usually these waters have salts. And so their concentration may affect the experiment. But if you don't have distilled water, if you use laboratory water or even water at home, then you make sure that the sugar solution is highly concentrated. Instead of putting like one spoon of sugar, then you will be required to put there two spoons of sugar. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you, Peter. So, that express non-living material. Uh, we once again need some people to read it through for us this this experiment. Material. Come on, take for us. Yeah. Cellophane stroke whisking tubing around about ten to fifteen centimeters length. Uh, boiling it up in the procedure or. Which is where you put it, the, the setup. Another one to read for us the observation and the interpretation. Observation. Shalom. Mute. The level of the sugar solution in the capillary tube increases. The level of the water in the beaker decreases. Conclusion. Osmosis has taken place. Interpretation. Water molecules pass through the cell cellophane tubing into the sugar solution by osmosis, thus increasing its volume and forcing it up the capillary tube. Water acts as a dilute solution. Sugar solution acts as a concentrated solution. Membrane of the visking tube acts as a semi-permeable membrane. Okay, thank you. So we are able to make the observation and the conclusion and we interpret what they mean, uh, the meaning of that uh, movement. It is osmosis and the, from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution through a semi-permeable membrane. Uh, this one now has got a number of experiments, but these experiments are more almost related. Uh, there is another experiment to show that uh, water molecules move across semi-permeable membrane. Uh, more or less like uh, the one we have seen above using a visking tubing, but this time without showing the rise in a capillary tube. You don't put in a capillary tube. You put uh, a sucrose solution or sugar solution in, in, in a visking tubing, but don't make it full so that it is not, it is not tight. And you put it in distilled water, hmm? the beginning of the experiment. Uh, make, a vis make a visking tubing, of course you use a thread, tie it at the bottom, open on the top, pour there sugar solution, which is a bit little, not so much. Let's say half of the, half of the visking tubing. Then you tie it and hang it on the, on the beaker. On the top of the beaker, you can put the glass rod so that you can hang using a thread into the solution. That is the beginning of the experiment. At the end of the experiment, you can see the visking tubing enlarging, it is bulging, meaning that water is entering. This experiment is more or less like the one we have discussed above, only that in this one there is no, there is no glass tube. Uh, there is no capillary tube. Otherwise it is the same to show that it is water that enters. So meaning that, that osmosis is taking place from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution. Uh, one who has not read yet, can we get someone to read for us through this? An experiment to show that water molecules move across a semi-permeable membrane. Apparatus for materials. Beaker, 
risking tubing at about 10 to 15 centimeters cube. Distilled water, sucrose solution, glass rod, and thread. Procedure. Tie one end of the visking tubing using a thread to make a very tiny knot. Make a sugar stroke sucrose solution and pour about five centimeters cube of it into the tubing. Then tie one, then tie the open end of the tubing with a thread, but making, but making what? But making the tubing soft and flabby to touch. Hang the visking tubing on a glass rod using a thread and dip it into a beaker filled with distilled water. Then leave the setup to stand for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, remove the visking tubing and observe the texture of the tubing and the volume of the distilled water in the beaker. Okay, thank you. Uh, that, that is the procedure. Uh, you know, when we are asking you to, to describe an experiment, one, you must put there the title because we ask you describe an experiment to show water that osmosis occurs using water and the sugar solution. Uh, so you must put there the title. The title, you always get it from the question given. Uh, for you, they will ask you describe, for you, you say an experiment to show water molecules move across sympermeal membrane. Then you need to remember the materials. The materials are about two marks. The title usually one mark. The materials are about two marks, each half half. So remember at least the four, either apparatus or materials. And then the procedure. Uh, of course, the wording may not necessarily be the same, but so long as you know what you are doing, hmm, you are tying the end of the, of the visking tubing tightly and you are pouring oh, there no. sucrose. Then you are tying it on the top uh, and uh, hanging it in the water within a beaker using a thread. You know, when you are mentioning those, you are giving the procedure that you are, you are going through. Uh, we need someone to, get, to read for us. We read for us the observation, conclusion, and the explanation. Okay. Yes. The first one. The first one. Michelle. Uh -huh. Observation. The, the visking tubing becomes hard and tough. The volume of the distilled water in the beaker reduces. Conclusion. Water molecules move across the semi-permeable membrane into the visking tubing by osmosis. Explanation. Water molecules move from the beaker into the visking tubing by osmosis because the solution inside the tubing is more concentrated than the solution. also causes a volume of, the, of water in the beaker to reduce. If the, mm -hmm. distilled water, if the distilled water is placed inside the visking tubing and hung into a beaker of sucrose solution, the tubing becomes soft and flabby and the volume of the solution in the beaker increases. Okay. Uh, The solution in the beaker, the last statement there has high water potential. Uh, high water potential is just a, a solution which has got a lot of water molecules. A solution which has got a lot of water molecules, we say has high water potential. Uh, a solution which has a low sugar mole water molecules, a concentrated solution, for example, we shall say it has Osmotic pressure, a concentrated solution will have a high osmotic pressure. A concentrated solution will enable 
water to move into it by osmosis at a very high speed. So we say it has a high osmotic pressure. Whereas a dilute solution will have a low osmotic pressure. Uh, those words may appear, but they should not confuse you. High water potential is when the solution has a lot of water molecules, a dilute one in that, in that case. And if it is concentrated, we say it has a low water potential. Okay. About. Otherwise, we are continuing with the discussion. This one was the alternative, this one which is faint. They are saying that if you put it, it is the reverse of what is already discussed. If you put distilled water in the visking tubing and fully filled, and you put it in a beaker having a solution, Again, you hang it uh, with using a thread onto the glass load, beginning of the experiment. At the end of the experiment, of course, it will become soft and flabby. Uh, the reason uh, is that it loses water the visking tubing will lose water into the sugar solution, which is within the beaker by osmosis, because the sugar solution is more concentrated than the distilled water. They are just trying to give the reverse of what will happen in the above experiment. Okay, uh, so we having looked at this experiment, experiments, <clears throat> we can discuss osmosis in different cells, the animal cells, and later the plant cells. And in the animal cells, uh, we shall use the red blood cells. If, for example, you get a red blood cells, this is done experimentally using a, using a, uh, you just get blood and you put it in different solutions, uh, glass slides, and they use a microscope to observe this, just like they use a microscope to detect whether you have malaria parasites or not, uh, or whether you have been infected by any disease. Uh, similarly, they just get, uh, and they get it in a concentrated solution, one drop of blood in a concentrated solution, another drop of blood in water, another drop of what blood maybe in a solution which is not very concentrated. And they see how they behave, these cells. Remember, these are cells with the cell membrane. The cell membrane is also semi-permeable. So what happens is that if you have got that drop of blood, you have put it in a, in, a, in a test tube, for example, having water, having water, what will happen is that these cells are going to absorb water by osmosis continuously and they will burst because they cannot absorb water uh, until they cannot, if they cannot absorb water anymore, they will burst. Then those cells which will be put in a, a concentrated solution, a solution which has got high sugar uh, content, then they will lose water by osmosis and for them they will shrink. They will become very small. And those ones which will be put in a solution which is not very dilute, mildly concentrated, there will be no much change. And so uh, these are the cells, they are putting, they are putting different uh, solutions. They, you can see these beakers, uh, different uh, solutions. Uh, so if I may add a concentrated 
this solution is referred to as so these cells have put they have been put in a hypertonic solution solution which is very concentrated then the last one there hypotonic solution this is a dilute solution mm, for example water hypotonic solution then isotonic solution <clears throat> this is a solution whose concentration is more or less like that one in the cell. Mm -hmm. Or the amount of salts within this isotonic solution are almost the same as the salts or sugars found within the, this red blood cell. In this case, they have used only one red blood cell. And so, uh, if they are many, you will see how they appear. Uh, in the real sense, this is how they appear in a hypertonic solution. Uh, they, they lose water and shrink and reduce in size and become soft. Uh, then in the isotonic solution, they remain normal cells. In a hypotonic solution, you can see one of them bursting. So they start bursting. And down there, they are giving you the direction of the movement of water. Uh, in a hypertonic solution, they are showing you how water moves out of the cell. That's how they shrink, because it is a concentrated one. In the isotonic solution, since the concentrations are the same, water will move from the solution into the cell. And at the same time, water will move from the cell into the solution because their concentrations are almost the same. This is the isotonic solution. Then in a hypotonic solution, which is a dilute solution, for example, water, for example, distilled water, Noella. Um, I wanted to ask about osmotic pressure. Is the minimum pressure needed to, um, the minimum pressure applied in order to prevent inward movement of water from a dilute solution to a concentrated one. So if it's a pressure that prevents inward movement of water, wouldn't a dilute solution have a more osmotic pressure since it, it needs to prevent more movement of water because it's already diluted and if it's enough, it doesn't need more water. So doesn't this make it, doesn't it, doesn't this make, make it to have an, um, an, a higher osmotic pressure? Okay, that is a very good question. This question we probably, we shall answer it when we are looking at the osmosis in the plants because that's, that's where such terms are applied. When we have discussed then the, the osmosis in the plant, which is the next one, because after uh, osmosis in the, these red blood cells, you are supposed to talk about osmosis in the plant cells. And that's where osmotic pressure is could be uh, applied. Uh, so when we reach there, we should be able to discuss it, okay? Otherwise, it is a very good question. Okay. Mm. Any other? Are there is a kilo? Akelo, Daniela. Um, okay, then uh, not, okay. Yes, Akelo. Um, uh, if there is no question, uh, next time I think we shall begin from this point of of osmosis in the red, reading through. Otherwise, you have got the explanation of those terms, especially those three different solutions. The isotonic, which is the same, the hypertonic, which is concentrated, and the hypotonic, which is a dilute solution. So next time we shall begin from this point. Otherwise, let's stop here for today. Have yeah. a nice time. Bye, Someone can give me prayer. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Thanks for the lesson.